This video will look at the selling process. It will look at many of the issues that underpin the selling effort and the issues that the salespeople must take into account in order to bring about a sale. It's a complex activity and requires an in-depth understanding of customers and how they behave when making a sale. Uh, sometimes customers behavior uh, are not they're not predictable in the context of selling. Uh, people may make excuses for not buying or may uh, give false information to the salespeople about the purpose of the purchase or the use of the item being purchased or they, they, they may send out contradictory signals as well. So it's a complex process and the salespeople should be adequately trained in order to deal with the customers. It's a step, of, a step of activities that must be undertaken by the sales force in order to encourage a sale. The sales force should be trained and should have the skills to bring about the sale and to, to deal with the diversity of customer responses and the sometimes the contradictory information that the customers are giving out about themselves or the the requirement that they've got. Each element in the selling process needs to be carefully utilized as it can make or break the sale chain. So uh, it's it's a whole process selling from the initial introduction of the salesperson to the customer and right through to the, the conclusion of the sale. Uh, clearly this applies in the case of face-to-face uh, -face selling and the, when, when people deal with each other. In the context of online selling uh, a different set of processes will apply. But that's the subject of a completely separate video. <coughs> so if we look at one typology of the selling process, one put forward by Rich, uh, we start with prospecting. Well, I'll explain each one of these in the rest of this video. The rest of the video, in fact, will be given over to looking at each of these steps. But we start with prospecting, and then the pre-approach, followed by the approach, then needs assessment, and then presentation, meeting objectives, gaining commitment, and finally follow-up. So it's a, <clears throat> it's a series of steps starting with prospecting. So let's go through each of these and look at what's meant by them and see what we can understand about the whole process from looking at each of them. We'll start with prospecting. Prospecting is the first step in the selling process. It involves searching for potential customers who have a need and can afford to buy the product. So there are two types of criteria that we need to address. <clears throat> First of all, we need to find customers who want the product, who need it, but not only that, that they can also afford the product. It may be possible to find a lot of people who want the product but who perhaps can't afford it. A salesperson is able to identify potential customers. So it's the skill of the salesperson to identify a potential customer, someone who is likely to make the purchase from their behavior, from their demeanor, uh, from perhaps the way they dress, act, talk. There is something that the salesperson can pick up on which will indicate a potential sale. The prospecting stage includes identifying leads, researching potential customers in other words, uh, looking for potential customers and trying to research them, and qualifying leads, uh, prioritizing customers who are likely to buy. So having identified uh, a set of potential customers, it's a question of prioritizing who are most, most likely to buy within the set and then focusing efforts on those customers. Now qualifying leads, well qualifying leads is the process of obtaining information and research about potential customers. 
it's trying to find out some background about the potential customers which will uh, enable the salesperson to perhaps more readily make the sale, more easily make the sale. The process involves gaining leads and salespeople use a variety of methods to gain information about potential customers. For example, they could use existing customers and talk to existing customers about people they know who may, may be interested in a similar product or just generally talk to the existing customers and out of these directed talks not just general talks but directed talks out of these the existing customers may talk about their friends or family who could also perhaps uh, be approached for, for, for a sale so existing customers are a good source of information generally speaking there are also internal sources within the business. It may be that um, other salespeople within the organization have seen the same people visiting the shop or visiting the store on many occasions. And when, when sales, the sales team talk, they could identify people who have come back several times and perhaps looked at the same product. In other words, they are especially interested in a product and may be worth approaching. So it's the internal sources of information. Perhaps uh, could be records kept or past sales or it could be frequency of visits to, uh, to a shop. There are many sources of information internally that can be tapped into. It could also be external agencies. It could be um, that uh, external agencies, other companies or um, other marketing agencies um, have identified certain customers as particularly interested in products so that their researches can be used by another company. If, uh, if a company selling the same product or a similar product elsewhere is targeting a particular type of person there must be a reason for that and it's a question of trying to ascertain the reason and perhaps focusing in on that same set of customers perhaps in a different region. Directories are also useful um, sometimes telephone directories or even business directories there are many types of directories available um, sometimes communities have directories of users of particular products within the area um, so that there, there is uh, clearly a, a focusing of the effort by looking at people who use similar products or the same products and perhaps calling those people calling them and talking about the product and the, the price and, and the promotions that are available and perhaps possible discounts and so on so that the directories may lead to, to some sales. There is a downside to the use of directories because the recipients of the calls, if it's used by say telephone calls, they may see the call as intrusive or as a spam call. It's an unwanted call and it's taken up their time and they're not interested. So it may in fact alienate in the same way as it may promote the sale. It may alienate the customer from the organization who sees the organization as intrusive and uh, making on unwarranted calls. On the other hand, the person receiving the call may welcome it because they're thinking of buying uh, a replacement product or a new product and they want to talk to someone. Networking is important as well. Networking is when um, existing customers know each other, they know family, friends, uh, work colleagues and they perhaps know the organization and through the whole networking system information can be passed around about the products, about its uh, attributes, about its price and so on. So networking is a good way of getting sales. And finally cold canvassing. This is when unsolicited calls are made to individuals almost randomly asking them to make a purchase or if they're interested in a certain product. It's got a, a bad reputation 
and many people resent having these calls. Sometimes in the evening when they're about to have their evening meal, the phone rings and it's a salesperson trying to make a sale. Uh, as far as the recipient of the call is concerned, that's intrusive, that's, that's annoying and it could alienate them from the organization. It could even lead to the recipient reporting the company for making such calls and trying to get the calls banned by the phone company. So call canvassing is a last resort. It's, uh, it's an act of desperation almost and it's not highly regarded. Existing customers are a good source for identifying potential customers. Customers tend to give honest feedback and word of mouth is effective, uh, an effective method for gaining customers. So w when a sale is made to a customer, the customer may give feedback and the feedback could be positive and could be used to try and attract in other customers because the customer's endorsement their recommendation is included in their feedback. If their feedback is positive it should be used or it could be used to encourage further sales and to allay the fears of potential purchasers. In s internal sources such as marketing department, uh, sales management or telemarketing team is a source for engaging with potential customers. As I said earlier, I, I've been through these briefly earlier, but as I said, um, sometimes internally there are records stored about previous purchases, there may be some information about customers stored. Uh, it could be just that the, the person was picked up on, um, <clears throat> on the monitors as visiting the store on a frequent basis just to look at a particular product. Perhaps not make the purchase, look ahead, check it uh, and leave the store. Clearly they're interested in a certain product and it would be worth dealing with them on the next occasion to visit the store. An internal source of information. Um, customers may contact the business regard, regarding promotions and advertising, direct mail, company uh, website, salespeople, or they may be contacting the organization for inquiries. inquiries. So um, customers may contact the business regarding all sorts of issues and if the customers contact the organization, the organization should be in a position of capturing some of that information and perhaps contacting the customer back when there is a promotion. This is quite common online. Uh, when, when we make purchases online, uh, we surrender our email address and sometimes we, we get follow-up emails from the organization making additional offers. You may also be interested in the following products. So it often happens online. The external agencies are a source for identifying leads. Some organizations, especially online businesses, uh, offer leads for potential customers. Um, it's often the case if we visit a website looking for a particular product, uh, we're not sure whether we should buy it or not, and at the end of the page it says customers also bought the following customers interested in this product were also interested in the following. So it's presenting alternatives. Uh, it wants to make a sale and although we're, we're not going to buy perhaps the one we we originally checked, <clears throat> the organization, the, the company is offering alternatives, perhaps related alternatives, similar products at the bottom so we can make a a decision between a set of products and we're more likely to make a decision when we're selecting from a group because we, we know what the the other products are. Directories, as I said earlier, are also a good source for uh, potential customers. Customers can be contacted through uh, government and websites that offer directory services. For example, Yellow Pages. But it's care has to be taken because it could be seen, as I said earlier, it could be seen as cold calling and uh, it could be seen as spam and as an unjustified intrusion into people's lives. So the fact that the information exists poses a problem how to best use the information. 
uh, if if advertising and promotional material is sent through the post it may not even be opened it may go straight into the recycle bin uh, if it's um, sent as an email or in some method electronically it may be filtered into spam straight away networking well salespeople uh, this is a good means of uh, for identifying potential customers the salesperson uh, have relationships with customers and with, with other work colleagues and with the organization and they they're networked in many directions um, family friends and acquaintances and so on and they have the potential to use that wide networking facility to perhaps draw in other people into the network and to to make sales um, probably the best form as I said earlier is to use existing customers and to try to network with existing customers stay in contact with them so that they will tell their friends and their friends will become involved and so on so it's maybe it, it's it's a form of selling it's generally speaking quite a good idea it's the way in which uh, a lot of business is done and finally the one I dealt with as well is is uh, this idea of um, cold canvassing um, sometimes it's used and it gets the company sometimes a bad name because it's it's not requested even if it's door to door it's still not requested face to face it's still not requested. People who open the door, people in the house who open the door may be working, they may be involved in something and they haven't got time to stand and talk to a salesperson. It's very time consuming and mostly ineffective as the salesperson holds no previous knowledge of the customer. There's no background information generally speaking. It's just making a phone call to some random person hoping to make a sale. It's almost like an act of desperation but it's also very controversial because people don't request it and uh, they don't want it so before sell it selling process can begin the potential customer the lead must be qualified the customer must satisfy the following criteria does the customer have a need for the product so potential customers must be qualified in other words do they they must be good leads do they have a need for the product do they want the product what is the information upon which that question is answered how does the the salesperson know that the person wants the product or needs the product clearly the more expensive the product the more research is required and that question is more important with expensive product can they afford to buy the product that the company is selling? It may be that a whole set of customers are identified and they have a need for the product but they can't afford it. So they're not going to become effective customers, they're not going to buy the product because they can't afford it. So that needs to be taken into account. And if they have a need for the product, have they got a a desire to buy it do they really want it do they have a commitment to get this product is it a high priority for them if the customer does not qualify then the selling process will be unsuccessful potential customers need to be filtered for the selling process so it's a it's important that the customers uh, be identified that they, that they be qualified and that they they meet the three questions on the slide that they uh, have a need for the product uh, they can afford to buy it and they have a, a desire to have this product and if if those questions are used they can be used to filter customers so as to focus the energies of the sales team now the pre-approach uh, the pre-approach stage is the process of planning for the sale. The process is regarded as the information gathering stage. This is the pre-approach. This is before anything happens 
it's it's getting ready for the sale it's doing preliminary research it's it's gathering information the salespeople are responsible for researching about the potential customers it depends on the, uh, of course critically on the, the type of situation we're dealing with here if it's an expensive item there will be a lot of research if it's not such an, an expensive item it may be that the, the sales team simply watch the customers in a store and try to isolate out which ones are more likely to make a sale which ones are just there for just to see what what products are available so it's a question of experience on the part of the sales team to try and identify potential customers and ones who are going to make a purchase information about potential customers include information about their needs and wants and how the sales team can meet these needs so it's trying to find some background information on the customers that's most important it's very difficult to do if it's the first time they've they've met the sales team and the customer has met it's very difficult to do uh, for cheaper products where simply the the purchase is not spontaneous necessarily but perhaps it's it's not a major item someone enters an electrical store to buy a small radio uh, it's it's important to identify who's likely to make the purchase but at the same time it's not a big item of purchase perhaps so it, there's a balancing act and it is for the skill of the sales team to try and make make the sale uh, but make the sale with very limited information there's no background research from the information gathered the sales sales team then begin their presentation so when when is a major item and when when the sales team have spoken to the to the customer um for a little bit spoken generally about the store about the weather and about life and so on they've started to get a feel for the type of customer it is perhaps the education level of the customer may be starting to show through in the terms of the the language used uh, it may be the way the, the customer dresses um, to indicate whether they can afford to make a purchase um, but once the information is gathered then the sales team make their presentation so at the initial stage it's important not to rush into the sale this is um, a slightly more time-consuming process it's trying to make the sale but make the sale by talking to the person making them at ease relaxed having a general chat and then using that information the sales person should be able to gauge whether it is likely to be a potential customer can they afford the product have they got a need for the product have they got a desire to own the product The pre-approach stage includes two activities. Customer research, which may be very basic, like I've just said. It may be just meeting someone in the store and, and talking to them generally about products, about trends in the market, and so on. And it's also involved with the planning the sales presentation. It's important that the salesperson have a smooth presentation the salesperson knows the product completely and are able to answer questions without referring to notes or asking colleagues they know what the answers are they are well prepared so customer research is important knowing the customer and planning the sales presentation is also vitally important now with customer research the salesperson must carry out research about the potential customer they must find out relevant inf information which will support the selling process and as I said this may be done by just having a general chat with the the person just talking generally about about issues about anything about uh, sport on television but having talked to the person they should be able to work out the type of person generally speaking that person is and looking at the demeanor of the person can they afford the product 
And if both of those answers are affirmative and, and positive, then a likely sale may take place. And at that stage, the, the sales personnel will then move to the presentation stage, offering uh, certain products to meet requirements. Information differs depending on the type of product and the customer. Information can be customer background, education, lifestyle, personality, where they live, etc. Now these, this will be background information which will inform the salesperson whether this, this person is likely to make a purchase. But of course it depends on the type of product being sold. Uh, it depends on the price of the product. Um, if it's a, a very cheap item, there'll be little effort in gaining this background information and trying to make the sale. It's only if it's an expensive item, a car or a television, a very expensive smart television or uh, a very high powered computer or some particular product which is expensive. At that stage, uh, more information will be sought, there will be greater uh, concentration on background and the likelihood of, of making, the pur making the purchase. The research phase is very useful in identifying whether the salesperson um, can ar arouse a desire for the purchase. So the research phase indicates whether the person is likely to make the purchase or not. So it feed feeds back to the salesperson whether it's worth the effort carrying on or uh, moving to the next customer. So the research phase in a sense filters the research activity. Now planning the sales presentation, well this process requires some form of commitment from the customer to drive the sale forward. This could be an agreement or a contract. Uh, for for the, the sales activity to continue there must be some uh, interest or commitment on the part of the customer to drive it forward. If the customer is not participating or not feeding back sufficient responses or showing sufficient enthusiasm there's no point. Uh, there needs to be a goal setting process before moving up the sales process. Uh, it's important to first of all identify the product and gauge the enthusiasm the customer has for the product. Whether they are genuinely interested or just, just sh showing interest for the sake of it. Goals could be individual to each customer. Doing so ensures that potential customers are dealt with appropriately. So customers are different, people are different. So it's important to, first of all, in the mind of the selling person to have a goal, have a commitment on the part of the potential customer. Gauge their interest, try to assess their interest in the product. Try to work out their commitment to purchasing, whether they're likely to make the purchase or not. And then recognize that each customer is different. So it, the whole sales pitch needs to be customized for the customer. It, it needs to, to reflect the, the conversations and the information that's picked up from the research and the, the background information. It, need, it needs to be refined in the context of that information. And then it needs, the product needs to be presented in a way which is both professional and which addresses the, the needs that have been picked up in the research. Appropriate planning techniques must be considered in this stage. The salesperson must plan how they are going to approach potential customers. It's important that the approach is carefully worked out. The same approach will not uh, be appropriate for all customers. Customers are different. So it's important to work out what the approach is. Some customers will be older, some customers will be younger, some customers will be uh, in a hurry, others will be 
lurking around, just looking at products and taking their time. Some will have small children, some won't. It's important that the, the whole pitch is tailored to the situation that the salesperson finds him or herself in. Different customers, depending on needs, need to be approached differently. Sales presentations need to be adapted to suit individual customers. As I said earlier, it's important that they receive personalized almost presentations. They're, they're med, meant to, they're, they're made sorry, to, to feel important and they're more likely to make a commitment as a response of a good sales pitch that was targeted at them. Presentations need to be planned uh, which discuss product sales features and arouse a desire to purchase on the customer part. So even though the, the presentation may look very casual in some respects, professional but, but casual in the sense that it just, it just happened. In fact the presentation should have been rehearsed many times and potential questions or possible questions uh, have the answers ready to, to deal with those questions and to understand all of the issues associated with the product, its use, uh, its aftercare care service, the image it projects, the value for money and so on. So it's important that the salesperson be completely prepared to, to deal with the product in terms of the presentation and the customer and the customer's relationship to the presentation. Now the approach, moving on from the pre-approach. Once the salesperson has adequate information about customers through the pre-approach and the research process, the next stage is the approach. So the pre-approach is just gauging, trying to figure out who is likely to be the customer. Now the approach itself. The stage includes making an appointment with the buyer and gaining their attention uh, on the product service offered by the company. So it's making an appointment or, or it could be in, uh, in a car showroom uh, having watched the customers look at the various cars when the time is deemed to be right then make the approach go and speak to the customer and talk about just generally talk about uh, the product that they want what they've got in mind and start the, the sales process during the meeting with the customer the salesperson must build a good impression of themselves and the company it's important that the, the salesperson projects a very professional image so that the customer has confidence in the company and in the product. The sales uh, people are expected to dress formally, be professional, maintain good eye contact and project themselves confidently. So it's a question of uh, making sure that the image is professional and the image is one which rubs off well on the product. That uh, professional people would have this product, it's a desirable product, it's be put forward by a professional company who are careful about every aspect of their selling. And if they're careful about every aspect of their selling, they will be careful about the product, so the product itself. Uh, by association, the product must be good. Salespeople can gain customer attention by discussing the product and sometimes giving a sample for the customer to review, depending on the nature of the product. It may be possible to give a sample so that they, they can uh, test the product. For example, an expensive car. The customer may be allowed to drive the car and get some feeling about the car, some uh, feeling whether the car is responsive or is the right size or the right performance or whatever so they may be able to take it for a test drive. Um, with an expensive television they may be able to view the television and uh, 
look at the controls for the television and look at the functionality of the television various ways in which samples can be given the approach only lasts a few minutes but this stage has the potential to make or break a sale if the approach stage has been unsuccessful then the selling process stops here that's it it's over so the approach can only happen once it's a one-off event the pre-approach should have prepared the the salesperson and got the salesperson ready for the approach the approach itself must be successful and it must it must not be rushed but at the same time it must be targeted it must pick up the information that the customers feed back it must process the information the salesperson must process that information integrate it into the the sales pitch and allay any fears uh, the customers may have uh, encourage the customers to buy the product because of its style its reputation because of the image it projects and talk about its functionality and the professionalism of the business if all of that seems to not work then the process stops now a needs assessment this stage involves carrying out an assessment of customer needs uh, an analysis of what the customers want and trying to solve their problems this is on the assumption that the process is carrying on so the approach has been made now the approach is continuing there is interest and there is the possibility of a sale so now the salesperson must do some sort of a needs assessment uh, what is it the customer needs what, what are the customers after and how will the product resolve the issues that they're they're raising how will the product help them how will the product uh, satisfy the needs that they have got so it's trying to look at the needs assessment the the process is carrying on the process hasn't stopped the the customer let's say uh, based on the the pre approach and what's happened so far in the the basic approach the the startup approach it's looking good it's a sale is possible now a needs assessment is being conducted by the salesperson they are talking to the customer about what exactly do they want so that the the salesperson can identify the model or the particular product that's best suited to the customer. The salesperson take, uh, tasks is to um, identify and clarify customer needs. Um, they, they ask questions. They constantly ask questions about what they require, what they need, where they're going to use the product, what it'll be used for, how many, how much will it be used, um, and so on. So they're trying to gauge the needs who who wants the product who will be using the product uh, what's the needs of the person who will be using that product asking questions is a good method of identifying customer needs and how the salesperson can help to solve uh, or meet these needs so asking questions is is a very direct and very simple way of getting information so the, the salesperson asks the customer what the product uh, requirements are uh, how much they're looking to spend although that question may come towards the end uh, when there is absolute commitment raising money and raising the, the sales price too early may be off-putting now the questions may include situational questions require factual information about the customer so factual information um, do they need this product? That's what the the questions are trying to determine. Um, do they do they desire the product sufficiently to make the purchase? There's problem discovery questions, questions that can help uncover the root of customers' problems and help to solve them. Sometimes customers are there in the process of making the purchase, but at the same time they've got unresolved issues they've got questions that they're not quite sure about and as long as those questions remain with them they're more likely to back away they're more likely to leave it and perhaps return another time or not return completely 
but if they've got problems they need to be exposed the, the problems need to be questioned and answered and answered effectively there's problem impact questions the extent to which the customer problems will impact the business and effectiveness of solutions offered um, how big are the, the problems that the, the customers may anticipate what issues are they likely to uh, encounter what, what, what problems are they likely to encounter with the product uh, what are the issues what, what exactly is holding back the sale so which problems are more significant and how can the problems be addressed how can the problems be dealt with there's also confirmatory, confirmatory questions uh, salespeople can identify if the customer is interested in the product or service so there's confirmation that this is a real customer they, by asking questions they can find out if it's a real customer or it's just somebody spending the afternoon out just looking at products in general so they try to figure out if the customer is genuinely interested in making the purchase or just spending uh, some recreational time looking at products in shops now the presentation well potential customers are selected and can now go through the selling process the, fil uh, the filtered uh, customers are selected because they are more likely to to make a sale so now having got through the, the pre-approach and the approach we're on to the presentation and the presentation is talking about the product talking about it in a way that uh, is likely to cement the sale it's likely to guarantee the sale because the presentation should be smooth uh, the, the salesperson should have practiced this many times it should be a polished performance it's more than likely going to clinch the sale the presentation stage of the selling process is to influence the customer to purchase the product. It, the questions have been asked, the type of customer it is, the issues that are holding back the customer have been identified. Now the presentation should deal with those. And the presentation is not perhaps a formal uh, presentation, it's simply the, the salesperson changing mode changing from talking generally uh, chatting to the customer uh, asking some questions now it's changing to talking about the product presenting the product this is the product this these are the attributes of the product this is what the product is capable of the presentation stage can be presented in different formats it could be a presentation discussion it could be visual aids it could be written documents it can be done in various ways. Uh, it could be that the customers are invited to see some audio-visual presentation about the product. Or it could be the salesperson simply stands there and explains the product and demonstrates the product. The presentation uh, must outline the key features of the product and service. The benefits of the product and service must be communicated to the customer. It's important that the presentation deals with all of the issues that the customer can imagine. All of the different scenarios, um, the key features, the, the real selling features of the product should be illustrated. The advantages of owning this product should be put across. The sales uh, presentation must satisfy a customer need for the product and arouse a desire to purchase. Uh, the customer should watch the presentation, they watch the salesperson going through the product, its uses and so on, and this should create a desire on the part of the customer to possess the product. So a su successful presentation must consider the product demonstrations or samples it must look at various ways of presenting and demonstrating the product look at the use of samples perhaps a test drive in a car or allowing the, the customer to operate the controls of a smart television or whatever it is the use of a pre-prepared sales presentation this may be a mental 
preparation, the, the salesperson may have rehearsed this presentation many times and is very smooth at presenting. It's, it's been done many times. Um, it should be it should use effective presentation techniques whatever the product is the presentation should be associated with the presentation style the, the product and the presentation style should be linked in other words if it's a high-tech product perhaps a high-tech presentation if it's uh, an item of uh, an item for the for the home perhaps some furniture uh, the presentation will be different. Perhaps the presentation will be allowing the people to uh, sit on the furniture or look at the furniture or to walk around it and feel it and test it and so on. So it depends on the product but effective presentation techniques should be sought depending on the nature of the product. Now, product demonstration and samples. Well, a sales presentation must contain some form of product demonstration or samples. Uh, a customer should be able to see the product and use its features before they decide to purchase. If they can't, if they're kept away from the product, they will think there is something wrong. There is something wrong with the product. The, the salespeople are hiding some characteristic of the product. They will become suspicious and the sale will fail. Some organizations have advanced software which allows salespeople to use graphics and visual aids and sounds. Um, the multimedia facilities ensure that customer experience the product. Now, this could be done by, um, for example, people who wish to buy a new fitted kitchen may go and see a computer aided design package uh, modeling their kitchen in front of them so that they can rotate the image and look at the various issues and look where the refrigerator will be and look where the cooker will be and move it around so that they get a feeling for what the new kitchen could look like. If it's a car they could have a test drive in the car but in addition to that they may look at some graphics about the car and change the different colors of the car by just clicking on a button in front of a computer monitor. So there organizations have more facilities to impress customers and to to answer questions the pre-planned sales presentation well some sales presentations are pre-planned pre and prepared by other salespeople the salesperson is required to use the same presentation sometimes companies want salespeople to have the same type of presentation so there is uh, a unified approach and it doesn't allow the salespeople to make promises or to to answer questions wrongly or to to mislead the customers and therefore generate a liability on the part of the organization should something go wrong so sometimes companies have the same presentation for all the sales staff and the sales staff are trained in the use of that presentation technique and in the type of wording and issues that will be dealt with in the, pre in the sales presentation. And the reason for that is because there's consistency right across the organization. If the customer subsequently returns to the sales point to, to talk about further issues and meets a different salesperson, they will get essentially the same responses. So there is consistency but also the company is less liable for for issues if they go wrong. Legally the the, the, the salespeople, the sales personnel were giving a consistent presentation. Using a planned presentation can be beneficial as the salesperson knows that they have uh, discussed all elements of the presentation and have not missed an important section. That's important. They have the the standard sales pitch will have been rehearsed and discussed at many meetings and under many circumstances and will be refined uh, in the light of experience over a period of time. So that when a salesperson is making the presentation they are 
likely to cover all of the, the salient points. The presentation has been tried and tested, therefore it is effective. The process is cost effective for training. Um, presentation techniques. Well, salespeople must consider the following when delivering an effective presentation. The presentation must be simple and emphasize the, the main elements of the product. It must just look at the main elements of the product. It must be simple. Uh, they must speak in the language that the customers can understand rather than in industry jargon. So the language should suit the customer. The, customers must, the customer must be able to understand the product and not be baffled by complex terminology. It's important that the customer uh, feels at ease, and feels comfortable with the presentation and understands precisely what's been said. The presentation should be tailored to the customer's needs and they should be able to relate to the product. The salesperson must show that they are confident in the product in order for the customers to believe in the product. It's important that the, the salespeople do not get confused or, or are unable to answer questions. They must be familiar with the product and skilled in dealing with that product. Now meeting objections. Objections and questions arise in every presentation. The salesperson must be able to deal with these objections and provide an optimum solution for the customer. Uh, generally speaking, customers will also say, well, that's all very well, but what happens if this happens? Or what happens if? And gives scenarios which are quite negative. Then the, the salesperson must have anticipated those and have responses ready. The salesperson must listen to the customers and should ask more questions to get to the root of the objection. If there is an issue, they must find out what is the issue and is the issue destructive in terms of the sale? Will it destroy the sale? Can the issue be dealt with? Can the fear be allayed? Clarifying the question is a good method of ensuring that the customer and the salesperson understand the objection. Salespeople must be able to uh, sympathize and understand customers' objections and must be able to respond to their needs. There should be some sort of uh, empathy, some sort of relationship between the salesperson and the customer. They should the customer should feel that the salesperson has been honest and open and trying their best to address any problems that they may have. Objections can be the product price or value, it's perhaps the customer sees the product as too expensive. It could be the product itself, there's an issue with the product, it's, it's not the right design or it's the wrong colour or <coughs> it's too big or too small or whatever. There's also procrastinating objections. People sometimes just procrastinate in, in terms of just asking almost silly questions, just to string it out to, they have nothing else to do so they want to make it long and, and bring out some ridiculous objections. What if? What if? Alternatively, what if? Uh, they're not proper questions, they're just questions for the sake of having questions. Sometimes there are hidden objections. Sometimes customers have issues that they have not declared to the salesperson and they're holding on to those hidden objections. The price or value of a product or service may cause objections. The customers may feel that the product cost is more than its value. Now if that arises then that could be disastrous for the sale they need to feel that they're getting good value for money that they're getting a bargain that the price is not just right the price in their minds is cheap relative to what they're getting they must feel that product or service objections arise when customers do not perceive the product or service as useful to them or doesn't meet their need precisely uh, perhaps 
It's a useful product, but it's not exactly doing what they want. It doesn't match it precisely. Procrastinating objections are harder to deal with since the customer uses excuses to avoid a purchase, such as, I'll think about it, or I'll contact you. Let me discuss it with my boss. These are uh, tactics just to get away from the sale. The, the customer uh, feels that they've taken the salesperson's time. Now they don't want it, but they just want to get away. Uh, they want to end the situation, so they, they will use expressions like this. Hidden objections take place when the customer does not disclose the real reason for not buying. This is very common when the price is a major factor for objection. People don't want to be embarrassed and admit they can't afford it. So sometimes they make other reasons for not purchasing when in fact the true reason is they don't like the price. But they don't want to admit that because that will mean they, they may be seen as uh, perhaps not suitable for having that product. Not uh, They have wasted the the salesperson's time, they have wasted a lot of energy and deep down they should have admitted to start that they were looking at the wrong product because the price was too expensive for them. So they will look for other objections, they'll look for other ways out if they can. Now gaining commitment. Well in order to complete the sales process there needs to be commitment from the customer. The salesperson must be able to close the sale and assure that uh, that the customer is going to purchase the product or service. So the end is that the customer must be able to close the, close the, the deal. The customer must be able to make commitment, put a deposit on the product or purchase the product or whatever. And the, the, the salesperson must be able to uh, allay any last issues uh, smoothly run through the transaction and close the sale. Gaining commitment is a delicate stage as the customer may decide that they no longer want to continue with the sales process. This is at the very end, they've had the presentation, they've thought about the product, they've asked questions, they've got answers. There is the last bit, the last moment when they, they have to bring all of this together in their minds and decide yes or no. And that's just at the point of sale. To the purchase or not make the purchase. The salesperson must keep in contact with the customers until the sales process is complete. The salesperson must continue the process until it is complete. If the salesperson uh, pulls away too early and hands over to a colleague to take payment, it may fail at that stage. Follow-up activity. Um, Follow-up activity is essential after the sales has uh, completed. The sales team must keep in regular contact with customers to ensure that they are happy with the purchase. This may also of course generate additional customers, word of mouth and uh, additional inquiries. But uh, keeping in contact with the, with the customers is a good idea. It keeps um, another line of customers and potential customers uh, in, in, in view for the business. The, the business may contact them at the future or ask for recommendations or so keeping in contact is is good. Some organizations have after sales service uh, such as uh, one year warranty, customer relations management, uh, relationship marketing. So some organizations, some retail organizations may have this and may want to stay in contact with the customers and uh, send them newsletters through the internet and perhaps sometimes uh, just generally contact them uh, to ask if everything was okay and if it's no no obligation for a response just making it very casual was uh, was the product good uh, have you had good experiences we hope you're enjoying the product and we understand if you're too busy to reply to this and it's all very positive and very understanding, creates a good image of the organization. 
maintaining customer customers, uh, maintaining existing customers, I should say, uh, is a great part of the sales team. It's a it's a key part of the the sales team. That's what they're trying to do: keep the existing customers. But the existing customers will have friends and family and colleagues, so it could mushroom out. It could develop. Customers are likely to make repeat purchases if they're satisfied with the service that they are receiving. So the existing customers may return, but also their friends and colleagues and so on may also want to try out the products from the that particular store because they've been recommended. They've seen the service and they've seen the product in action. So they like it. So follow-up activity is also very important. This is a long class. I expect you to have stopped the class many times. Perhaps go and have a, a drink, a coffee or a glass of water or something and relax for a bit. Come back, continue the class, make notes and then uh, fill out your notes, read over some additional papers that will be on, on the Moodle site and see if you uh, if you understand and can make a succinct set of notes so that you understand the selling process completely and the issues involved in the, the selling process. But that's all we're going to deal with here. Um, so having said that, let's leave it at that and say thank you for watching.